engineer here. Could you ring this number for testing, please? 2499. Thank you very much. Where do you want this, Squire? Um, yeah, over there in the corner by the window, please. Right, right, right. Yes, all is in order. Thank you. Bye. Well, you're on. Oh, good. It is the number they said it will be. Is it Chertsey 2499? Yep, that's it. Oh, it's just as well, because I've got an ad in the local paper giving that number. Let's hope it rings for you. Cheerio, then. Cheerio. That's fine. That's fine. Hey, is that the lot? Yeah, that's it. Uh, £16.50, please. £16.50? What are you talking about? I thought it would be a five or something like that. What age are you living in, Squire? 1973? Yeah, but I have to give you a cheque. No, I can't take one without a banker's card. Oh, well, I haven't got one. Well, it'll have to be cash then, won't it? <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. I've just switched banks. They haven't given me a card yet. I haven't got that much cash. Oh, all right. I suppose a cheque will do. It'll be all right. Yeah. It's a flash sort of place you've got here. Oh, well, I haven't had time to get it done up yet, have I? Right, here we are then. Oh, uh, here. Get yourself a drink. So, you want to get yourself one of those cards? Yeah, y yes, I will, thanks. So, bye. Morning, Mr. Barker. Setting in all right? Uh, yes, yes, I suppose so. Yeah, a lick of paint would cheer the place up. Yeah, then I'll have to wait. Oh, dear. I'm afraid I've got a bill for you. Oh, no, I paid three months in advance. Uh, it's the uh, water rate. It's uh, your responsibility. Six pounds twenty? I've got one tap over there. How do they work it out? Oh, search me. I only need it for making tea. I can fill up the kettle at the station. Yeah, you're welcome to. Well, couldn't they disconnect me? Otherwise, it's going to be a very expensive cup of tea. You'd have to take that up with a water board. Oh, no, thanks. I'd rather pay it. Yeah, I save you a lot of aggro. Yeah, it's a very expensive business, moving. It costs more every time. Move around much? Yeah, a fair bit. Think you'll settle here? I might do. I've been here ten years. Not a bad little town. Yeah, no, I'm sure. Well, if there's anything I can do, just let me know. All right, thanks. Yeah, I've got to get back for the 10.13 up. Cheerio. Cheerio. Ah, uh, hello. Uh, my name's Marker. Could I have a word with the manager, please, Mr. Pierce? Yeah, I'd like to make an appointment. Marker. He's outside now. Yes, Mr. Pierce. Mm. Transferred his account from the Walton branch. Yes, they're all sixty-eight pounds forty-three pence of it. <laughs> yeah. Eaton branch before that. He's a restless customer now, Mr. Marker. All right, let's have him in. Mr. Marker. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Mark. Morning. Please sit down. Thank you. Well, it's always nice to meet my customers, especially when they're in an interesting job like yours. You're a private detective, I gather. Uh, inquiry agent. Really? Not Sherlock Holmes stuff, I suppose. Uh, More exciting than being a banker. Well. Would you like a glass of sherry? Uh, yes, yes, I would, thank you. I think I'll join you. You know, People always come here expecting to find some forbidding sort of ogre. <laughs> you, uh, you do want a loan, I take it? Well, um, yes. For your good health. Cheers. I don't want very much, you understand. Ah, now that's a pity. It's always easier to raise 50,000 than it is to raise 50. You're not after 50,000, I take it? Oh, good Lord, no. <laughs> well, never mind. Like a cigarette? No, I don't smoke, thank you. 
Tell me something about your business, Mr. Marker. You just set up shop here in Chertsey. That's right, yes. Why? Is it good territory for a private, uh, an inquiry agent? Don't know yet. <laughs> no clients so far? Oh, well, give me a chance. I only opened up an hour ago. No, it's the move that's messed me up. It cost me a lot more than I thought it would. Uh, may I ask why you did move? Well, I was in partnership and I wanted to be on my own again. Oh, that's fair enough. Right, now, uh, how much do you want? 150 pounds. 150. Mm, for how long? Three months. Mm. Well, you must make a good many credit inquiries about people. Oh, yes, yes, a lot. So you don't mind if I make one or two about you? Ah. Uh, well, I'm not married. I've got no relations, no dependents. I don't own any property. I've got no insurance and no collateral. In fact, on the surface, I'm not a very good risk. <laughs> you don't recommend yourself. <laughs> Have you always been on your own? Why, what's wrong with that? It tends to make a man touchy. I'd like to lend you this money. Oh, I understand. All right, let's forget about it then. You're making things awfully hard for me. I'm simply surprised that you need three months to pay back a relatively small sum. What are you earning? Enough. Wrong, not enough, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Now, what do you charge for your services? Six pounds fifty a day, plus expenses. Well, that seems to me ridiculously low. Oh, yeah, well, my clients aren't usually rich. <laughs> Those that are aren't usually generous. Well, even so. But I'm not in it for the money. I mean, what would I do with them? Well... If it isn't a rude question, what are you in it for? Buy my own boss for a start. And you're interested in people? I suppose so. I don't like some of them very much, but, yeah, I suppose I'm interested. And they like you? No, I do. Well, you're very generous to them. How do you mean? Your charges. They're not high enough. Now, what's the rent of your office? Uh, Nineteen pounds a quarter. Mm, it's about seven pounds a week. Uh, do you live on the premises? Oh, no, no. I've got digs in Westbury Street. There's nothing grand, but clean and comfortable. And what do they cost? Ten pounds a week. Ten. So you have to earn seventeen pounds a week before you can buy yourself a cup of tea. Now, on what you charge, you can't earn more than, what, thirty-five a week? Well, a bit more. I don't take days off. You can't have much fun, then. Uh, Mr. Pierce, in my job, I find people who are missing. I recover valuable property that's uh, disappeared. I give people a hand if they're being swindled or messed about. And sometimes I put things right when it's all gone wrong. Well, I don't always succeed, of course, but when I do, yeah, I suppose you could call that fun. And you want this loan? Well, to stay in business. And to keep alive. Oh, dear, that's the worst possible reason you could have given me. Very unproductive lending people money to stay alive. Oh, well, I'll take worse hammerings, I suppose. I'll manage somehow. How many cheques out? Here. For more than what's in your account? I'm 18 pounds over. Better have another glass of sherry. You're playing little games with me. <laughs> Forgive me. I will give you overdraft facilities for 200 pounds <laughs> on one condition. What's that? that you raise your charges to at least two pounds an hour. Oh, I couldn't do that. We had occasion to use an inquiry agent about a year ago. We were charged two pounds fifty an hour. What? It's daylight robbery. Yeah, I bet he's charging three pounds by 20 now. Twenty pounds a day. I could never charge it. I wouldn't have any customers at all. Besides, I'd be paying back most of it in tax. Look, Mr. Marco, we like our customers to do well. If business is good for them, it's good for us. Now, you're not doing well. Not because you're not working hard. But you're underpricing yourself. You're worth more than you think you are. You may be right, but I don't like doing people. The only person you're doing is yourself. And that's something your bank manager won't stand for. I'll tell you what. I'll put it up to uh, £1.25 an hour. It's £10 a day. Not enough. I can't ask more. Very well. All I can offer you is a £50 overdraft, and we review it in a month. Fifty pounds. Sorry to be so hard, but business is business. On the other hand, if I felt that more money was coming oh, into well, your... Oh, I suppose it'll have to do that. What a funny chap. You don't like people trying to help you, do you? Well, how do you make that up? Well, you help others. Uh, for a fee? Yeah, it's too damn modest. Fifty pounds isn't going to get you very far. No. Still, that's my worry. Thank you. Do you know the crown? Uh, yeah. I often use it. Oh, well, I'll be able to repay the compliment then. No, I'd like to meet you again, informally. And I only drink halves of bitter. In that case, it'll be a pleasure. Sorry we couldn't do more. Goodbye. It's a 
funny chap. Yes, sir. But a nice man. Which means we shan't get rich on him. Mr. Marker? Yes, yes, sir. Could we have a word? What about? You're an inquiry agent. Oh, business. Oh, yeah. Yeah, come in. I'm sorry the place is in a mess. Only moved in an hour ago. Can we sit down? Matter of fact, you're my first customers. Oh, yes. Yeah. Right, now, what can I do for you? Could you find someone for us? What, here? Well, he's old up somewhere in Surrey, yeah. We think he's living around here. Ah. Uh -huh. It was seen in a pub, The Crown, three days ago. Now, what's his name? It's Nags. Jimmy Nags. With a K. <laughs> Anything else you can tell me about him? Got a picture of him. That's him. And uh, me with a couple of birds at the Astor. Oh, very nice, very nice. Why did he run away? He owes us money. A lot of money. What do you want me to do? Put a writ on him? Oh, no, just tell us where he is. Is this on a level? Because I don't want to get mixed up in no, anything. Not... You know? It's perfectly straightforward. He was our partner in business. He skipped with the capital. We uh, don't want to call the law on him just yet. There's a little matter of tax. We don't want it made public, you understand. Uh -huh, I see. Just find out where he's living, that's all. But try not to let him know you're onto him. He could skip again. Uh -huh, I see. Well, how much do you charge? Ten pounds a day, plus expenses. There's uh, 50 in advance. There's another ton in it for you if you can find him. If you can do it in a couple of days, so much the better. Of course, the money'll still be the same. Eh, uh, eh, uh, how, how, uh, how long did it disappear? Eight days ago. Oh, then there's no point in checking the electoral register or the rates office of the Labour Exchange, is it? <laughs> Certainly not the Labour. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, where can I get in touch with you? We'll contact you. Will this help? Cheers. Thank you, Mr. Marker. We'll be in touch. Time, please. Past drinking up time. May I have your glass now, sir, please? When I finish my drink, yeah. It's past drinking up time. Time, gentlemen, please. Time, please. Come along, come along, please. You're repeating yourself. I'm trying to make this place look like a home. With you in it, you don't need to try. How did it go? Got rid of six thousand pounds for four and a half. But that is one and a half thousand less. But it's a laundry charge. I mean, that money's clean now. It is expensive, this laundry. But Ingrid, this man is a bookie. If he's got a handy way with hot money, you've got to pay for the service. But all that money. Well, we've still got plenty. Is it enough? Oh, for Spain? You'll have your place in the sun, no worries. Come here. 
I love you, Jimmy. Come to bed, then. It's daylight. Mm -hmm. Later. Later. God, you drive me up the wall sometimes. When do we leave this place? About a week, maybe. Got some more money to launder. I can't do it all at once, you know. So long? But, Jimmy, what about those other men? Forget about them. They're nothing. You'd never think it was daylight outside, would you? He was in here at lunchtime. You don't happen to know where he lives, do you? No idea. When do you reckon he'll be in again? Could be in any moment. He usually brings this girl with him in the evenings. Oh, yeah. Friend of yours, you say? Well, uh, friend of a friend. You're in luck. You don't have to mention that I was asking after him. What's it worth? Keep it. I don't like him either. Bacardi, I think. And a large scotch. Go straight home and wait for me now. Why? Now what's don't that? argue. Do as I say now. Followed. The police? No, a private detective. Bates and Wilson hired him. Well, what did you do? I frightened him. Who's that? It's Pierce. Oh. I saw your light on as I was driving back, Mr. Marker. I wonder whether you'd care for a quick one across the road. Yeah. I'm sorry, is something wrong? Nothing that a little devoted nursing wouldn't cure. You've been in a fight. Just a thump in the guts and a few threatening words. But why? Somebody didn't like me following him. And why were you? Economic necessity. Don't drink. Thanks. Mm. 
Do you want some expensive water with it? Thanks. <coughs> You've got a rough job. Yeah. Got kicked half to death a few months ago. That did me no good either. I should think not. Well, did you find out what you were looking for? Oh, where he lived, no. Ah, oh, well, we all have our taste of failure. I should be managing a big London branch by now, I suppose. Still, I've had more fun out of life than most bankers. Yeah, you are pretty human for a bank manager. <laughs> I never made much of a hit with my last one. Not at all a valuable client. Ooh, you never will be. Still, never mind. My valuable clients bore the pants off me. You're making me feel better already. Good. And what are you going to do about this inquiry? Drop it? No, no. I've taken their money against my better judgment. I pushed you into this, did I? Mm. And my clients tell me that this fellow owes them a lot of money. My guess is that they're a bunch of hoodlums trying to carve each other up. Well, shouldn't you tell the police? I don't know, do I? Then drop it before you know too much. No, I'm committed. I'm on a hiding to nothing, but I'm committed. Do you know Chief Inspector Reeves, head of the CID here? Not yet, no. Would you like me to have a word with him? No, thanks. You sure? I know him well. He's a nice chap. The police would only screw things up and I wouldn't get my money. But if it's crooked money... <laughs> it all looks the same in a bank account. You should know that. You do worry me. Yeah. Oh, I think I will have that one with you across the road after all. Never mind where I am, Tommy boy. You ain't gonna find me. And nor is Danny. Because you haven't got the guts to come looking for me yourself, have you? You had to send me slag instead. Yeah, I thought I'd let you know I tumbled him. Now listen. Listen! You better call that poor bastard off. Because if I catch him hanging about again, I'll kill him. Oh, sorry, no luck yet. No, you blew it. What are you talking about? He phoned me. Oh. I suppose you was pissed. No, no, that was later. You didn't tell me it was a dangerous, violent bastard, did you? I told you to find out where he lived, not bloody well walk into him. What else did he say? Give me an ear full of abuse. I'll pass that on to you if you like. No, don't bother. But no clues. No, no, no. he's not, not a very helpful fella. <laughs> you made a right cock up of this job. We want our money back, like uh, 50 quid. He fancy a cup of tea. Come on, give up. Can't. It's been swallowed up. Then you'd better cough it up again, mate, because let me tell you, Marker, we don't get messed around by people like you. People like you? Well, what sort of people are you, I'd like to know? Come on, tell me, I'm interested. Well, are you? Bunch of villains, are you? South London hard boys, are you? Nobody welshes on us. I'm not welshing on you. I'll find what's his name, Nags, for you, and you can go around and beat the daylights out of him. I'll let him beat the daylights out of you for all I care. You're both equally nasty. As long as I don't get thumped and I do get paid. Oh. So you've got a bit of go in you after all. Yeah, but I'm skint and I... And you don't like the job? No. But like all straight people, you've got your price. If I fool enough to take the money, I'll do the job. At least we know where we stand. Now, what about the girlfriend? You didn't mention her. Girlfriend? With nags. Blonde, good-looking girl. Foreign-looking, German, Scandinavian, something like that. She's with him. Hungry. Oh, you know her, Eddie. She'll take him for the lot. Well, tell me about her. She's greedy. A grafter. She wants somebody to set her up in one of them clubs in Spain, you know, one of them tourist places. So she's picked on nags. She would, that bitch. Will they get to Spain, do you reckon? I could see her playing him. Like a great big wet fish. He's a hard bastard, but dead soft when it comes to women. She'll get him to Spain, all right. Yeah, what are they hanging about for? And what are they doing down here? 
I don't know. How much money does he owe you, roughly? Don't give me any details, don't want to know. It's a uh, sum in five figures. Cash? Yeah. Oh, he'd have a hard job getting that out of the country in currency, wouldn't he? Very risky. He could lose the whole lot. You mean he's fiddling it? Oh, why else a delay? How? Oh, I don't know. You tell me. You'd better trace him. And fast. Oh, we're back in business again, are we? And we'll help in any way we can. All right, then. The girlfriend, Ingrid. She doesn't frighten me so much. Tell me something about her. Yeah, she's German, from Hamburg. She came over here first as an au pair girl, and she started working the clubs. More money. Where did she work? She was hostess at the Al Gongwin Club up west. You know, getting the customers elephants on champagne and taking a commission. She on the game? She'd go case for 50. No, hang on, knowing her, it'd be 100. She's greedy. An hard grafter, like I said, and if we're not fast, our money's gonna end up in her pocket. When did she leave the Algonquin? Last week. In a hurry? I suppose so, like Nag's left in hurry too. Uh, who runs this club? Uh, a bloke called Marshall. Bruce Marshall. All right, I'll give him a ring. But he doesn't get there till late afternoon. We've got no time to waste. Will you let me do this my way, please? Now, where can I get in touch with you? We'll contact you tomorrow, and we'll expect results. And I'll expect another hundred quid in cash, all right? Earn it. Hmm. Marker. Frank Marker. Yeah. All I'm suggesting, Charlie, is we have a word with him. But he's in your line of business, after all. No, it wasn't his idea, it was mine. I had a long natter with him last night. I've got a thick head this morning to prove it. And he's a nice man, and he's got himself lumbered with a bunch of hoodlums. I don't know who they are. Look, Charlie, can't you just put him straight, see that he doesn't get off on the wrong foot down here? OK. Yeah, thanks a lot. See you soon, Charlie. Bye. Well, that's my good deed for the day. No, I shan't feel so bad about calling in a few overdrafts. The Algonquin Club. Uh, can I speak to Mr. Marshall, please, Mr. Bruce Marshall? All right, then, I'll wait. Thank you. Come in. Ah, oh, I won't keep you a minute. Would you like to sit down? Hello, yeah, Mr. Marshall. Uh, my name's Marker. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm running the new Astor Club down here in Chertsey. Well, we've only been open a couple of weeks, as a matter of fact. Why don't you drop in next time you're down this way? Yeah. Well, I've got a young German girl, Ingrid, applied for a job as a hostess. Ingrid Borg, yes, that's right. Now, she doesn't seem to have any employment cards. I wonder if they've been sent on to her. They could have gone to the wrong address, you know? Would you? Thank you. I'll hold on. Yeah. I'm sorry about this. I won't keep it on. Hello, yeah. Took them with her? Oh, that's funny. She must have lost them. No, I don't know. <laughs> Listen, with a girl like that, who needs references? Huh? Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks for the tip. I remember that. Bye. Huh? I'm sorry about that. Now, what can I do for you? How about reserving me a table for two at the New Astor Club? <laughs> that was a joke. Quite a con artist, aren't you, Mr. Marker? And who are you, may I ask? Detective Chief Inspector Reeves. Why can't I go out? I'm fed up with being cooped up here. All day, all night. It's not for much longer, now. You go out. Look, I know what I mean, Fall and I can take action to deal with it. You can't. I thought you said you had frightened him off. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. It's not fair. Also, I have no money. Oh, stuff this. But you don't need any money right now. I don't feel safe without money. Have you got any? I need it tomorrow. Then give me some from the cupboard. No! Look, this money has to be laundered so that no one can trace it back to you and me. Then give me a check. Oh. You would have to go to a bank to cash it. Three days. It's four at the most, and we'll be in sunny Spain. Hey? Eh? Our own beach. It's worth a few days' wait, isn't it? 
So, that's all you know about them. They could all be a bubble. But you think it's unlikely? Ah, well, it's not for me to say, is it? Are you holding something back? Why? Are you interested in Nags and his friends, then? Not very, but other people could be. No, I'm more interested in you, and seeing that you keep your nose clean while you're in my neighbourhood. Oh, I always do that. Conning people over the phone? Do you call that keeping your nose clean? Well, I have to use a bit of guile every now and again, you know. We can't extract information from people the way you can. I could do you for that call. Under what act? I could do you, and you know it. I'm not a limited company. I've got no partners. I work entirely alone. Otherwise, you could drum up a conspiracy charge. I'll admit, but who am I conspiring with, apart from you? No, you're bloody law, don't you? Yeah. Why are you interested in the girl's cards? Well, if she hadn't taken them with her, she might have left an address for them to be sent on to. But she didn't, so now you're stymied. No, but she's a greedy girl. She could be signing on, collecting a benefit. <laughs> I don't know why Bill Pierce is worried about you. You can look after yourself. You're a fly sort of sod, I'd say. Oh, thank you, Chief Inspector. I'll try. I'll give you that, but watch it. Jones? Sir? Want a dozen copies made of that photograph. Four to go to CRO with the inquiry if either of these men, Thomas Bates here, James Nex here, are known. Want the answer quick. Right, sir. Wait. If they are known, I want six copies to go to the Serious Crime Squad with the information that these men are in dispute over a large sum of money. Are they interested? I say. Is that all? No. I want surveillance for the next 24 hours on one franc marker. <laughs> That's cheap. Yeah, yes, I'm sure it is. Well, Builder would charge near 200. But they told me the rates on this place would be 52 pounds a half year. I've just had an assessment for 68. Ah, oh, it's shocking. It's demoralizing. It'll make crooks of us all. I mean, more work for you then, eh? <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Watson, I've got some rather important calls to make. Uh, not interested in the decorating? Yeah, not just now, thank you very much. I, I just thought it might help. Cheerio. Cheerio. Oh, hello, Labour Exchange. Uh, my name's Marston. I'm opening a club here in the near future, and I'm looking for some young, young ladies to act as uh, hostesses. Have you got anybody of that uh, ilk on your books? Really? Uh, is she experienced? Oh, uh, can I have her name and address, do you think? Oh, I see. No, no, not on the phone. No, of course not. Well, perhaps I'd better come in and see you. Well, what about today? Which is rather urgent. Today would suit me better. Oh, I see. It's benefit day, is it? All right, better be tomorrow then. Oh, I say, um, what time do you start paying out this morning? Thank you.
found I have some. Now. So let's not go for all that again, please. You have no consideration. I'm going mad in here. I will go out. You'll stay here. You see Jones just caught up on the PR side. He's stuck on the high street. The uh, girl Marcus following's gone into a hairdresser's apparently. Well? Well, she's been in there half an hour. Jones is worried about picking up a parking ticket. He's on a yellow line. Tell Jones, I don't care if he picks up a hundred pounds worth of parking tickets. He sticks to marker. Traffic won't like it. I'll get traffic. This is a yard inquiry now.
another five minutes and we'd have towed you away. Frank, what do you have? Bit of this. Find a bit of it. Make it a half. Make it a half. You busy? You put Reeves on to me. Now, don't get me wrong, Frank. It, it was done to help you. Well, now, what that kind of help I'll ask you for? Look, you. You told me that you were involved in something which might lead you into trouble. I thought Reeves might steer you out of it. I was involved in finding an address, and that's all. That's not what you told me the other night. Yeah, well, I was drunk then. <laughs> anyway, I found it now, so that's that. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> Friend of yours? Yeah. No. I've seen him a couple of times this morning. One of Reeves, boys, isn't All he? right. I was wrong. <coughs> I should never have approached Reeves, and I apologize. You should stick to lending money. Do us both a favor. I did it from the best of motives, Frank. Oh, yes, you meant well, don't you know? Cheers. been waiting for three bloody hours. Too bad. You got the money? Have you found them? I have. Who's your friend? Oh, he's just come along for a ride. He's on holiday from Broadmoor. Aren't you, Harry? Where are they? I'd like the rest of my fee, please. You'll get it. 49 Linkfield Street. Where's that? Well, you turn right, you go down the high street, set a lot of traffic lights, oh, you turn left, you go... Oh, me. You're coming with us. Oh, no. My contract was to find an address. What happens when you get there, I, I said don't you're coming with right. us, and this had better be the right address. They're there, I told you. Then show us. All right. All right. Come on, for Pete's sake. Get a move on. Right. Turn left as you go out, and I'll guide you from there.
All right, then. Satisfied? I think so. Who are you? Nice place you got here. Who are you? Never you mind. Very cosy. All this and the dole, too. Nice to see how the poor live. You followed me. You're the man that Jimmy... T you brought them here! You bastard! Hey, you bastard! Oh, you went on Jimmy against you! He'll kill you! You bastard! The only one who's getting murdered is Nagsy. Never mind, darling. You'll get what you want on somebody's back. Time, right? All right. Thanks. You've done well. Have I? Chief Inspector. Is Nags in there? Uh, I thought you weren't interested in him. He's wanted for questioning about a bank robbery in Clapham. Is he? Is he? Yeah. Well, I don't know anything about that. Oh, and I believe you. All right, Mr. Marker. We don't need you anymore. Uh, but I'll have my detective sergeant call on you. His name's Evans. What for? He'll want to know who's on his patch. Oh, on his patch? Yeah. I was hoping it was going to be mine.
I slept. And a thunderstorm woke me up. Didn't it wake you up? Why should you sit down, Mr. Uh... Oh, you know how it is. You haven't woken up, you can't get off again. And when it's time to get off, you're in a deep sleep. Stop. That's the way it is. Now, what can I do for you, Mr. Uh... Detective Sergeant Evans. CID. I see. Yeah, what do you want to see me about? Oh, nothing particular, sort of social, you know. Yeah. Brothers under the skin. Checking up on me? Oh, well, you're a bit of a rarity. I well, haven't had a private inquiry agent on the patch before. Can't think you'll get much uh, business round here, Mr. Margo. Well, surely there's business round everywhere. No, there it? is. And some of it's not good. I wonder what that means. Well, you came a bit of a cropper once. Don't you ever forget? That was what, Six five... years ago, and no, we don't. Birmingham police, wasn't it? Keen lot. Yeah, it's a bit too keen. What are you going to do? Run me out of town? <laughs> I just thought we'd let you know that we know, Frank. Going town. You've got your Ronnie Gash, haven't you? That's right. Yeah, did my sergeant's course with Ron. Can't see that? Small world. Put himself about a bit even then. Oh, yes, he's very bouncy, is Ron. Is that why you uh, left him? No, I, I, I prefer working on my own, that's all. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it must be great being your own boss. Do you think? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Sensible. Quite a, quite a palace you've got in. Yeah, well, suits me. Still, you've got a kettle. That's fine. Excuse me. Two, four, double nine, Marcus speaking. Hello. I'm speaking for Mrs. Alexander, the Laurels Farm Lane. Uh, would you be available to do an investigation? Oh, I think Mrs. Alexander would wish to tell you that in person. It is extremely urgent. Yeah, can you give me the address again? The Laurels Farm Lane. And the name is Alexander. I'll be there, thank you. Mrs. Alexander. <laughs> What's so funny there? Uh... Well, you'll, uh, you'll enjoy yourself there, Frank. Alexander. No, I just help out. Oh, I see. Well, my name's Mark. I spoke oh, to somebody yes. on the phone. Do come in. Yeah. Mrs. Alexander is expecting you. She's got a migraine, I'm afraid. The police were here and they upset her. She's lying down at the moment. Oh, sorry to hear that. But uh, she said it was urgent. Oh, she wants you know to see about... you, Mr. Marker. Let me take you up. Okay. It's this way. Yes, please, Eileen. Let him come in. Mr. Marker. It's all right. I'm sorry about the migraine, Mrs. Alexander. Are you sure it's so important for you to see me now? I could come back. Would you speak more softly? I beg your pardon? Speak softly. Oh, of course, I'm sorry. Would you bring a chair up and sit beside me? It's easier to talk. I do apologize for meeting you in this fashion, Mr. Mark. But it is very urgent that we come to some arrangement about tonight. Tonight? Yes. Put the book back on the bed. I want you to spend the night in the conservatory. That'll be all right, I suppose. What's it about, Mrs. Alexander? I'm not going to be able to talk very much. My head is a bum. Well, I would like just a bit of information. Are you afraid of something or what? I'm not in the least afraid. I'm very concerned. What about? 
Last night there was a thunderstorm. Perhaps it woke you. Uh, yes, yes, it did. Very heavy, wasn't it? Yes. I wonder, would you draw the curtains a little closer? There's a trick of light. Yes, of course. Malice is one of the worst weaknesses of the human condition, wouldn't you agree? Yes, yes, I would. Is that better? Yes, thank you. My neighbour, Mr Hartley, is full of malice. Did you say Hartley? Yes. He's under the impression that I tried to poison one of his wretched little poodles. Nasty, yappy little beast. What's this got to do with a thunderstorm, Mrs Alexander? It disturbed me. I woke with the impression that there was an intruder in the house, and there was. And did you actually see him, this intruder? No, but this morning I saw evidence of his visit when I went into the conservatory to check the thermostat. Oh, well, there's some pills out there. Would you mind? Yes, yes. I wouldn't have called you any the police are totally uncooperative. I can't, well, I could, but it wouldn't be any good sending him a cable. Would only alarm them. Would you break it in half? I can't swallow them whole. Yeah. It's getting a bit complicated, Mrs. Alexander. Would you tell me why you want me to spend the night in your conservatory? Can I have some water? Certainly. I am worried that the intruder will return to complete his work. Miss Finn, let me help you. Uh, thank you. To complete the work that he was obviously afraid to finish when I disturbed him. Oh, yeah. The police say it's all my imagination. <laughs> <coughs> oh, God. This is really is awful. I can never swallow pills. Uh, this work that he didn't quite finish, what exactly was it, Mrs. Alexander? An orchid. One broken orchid. I don't believe it. I thought you might like a cup of coffee. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sugar? Uh, yes, please. Two, please. Mrs. Alexander, is she a bit too... Nutty. Well... No. She's odd, that's all. Oh. Mm. Good coffee. Thanks. No, I'm a nut. I've agreed to spend the night in there. It's like a Turkish bath. And all for the sake of one broken orchid. Oh, there's more to it than that one. Some of the others are very special. In fact, Mrs. Alexander says they've been moved about. Oh, sensational. Oh, but they're very sensitive. The roots could kill them. At least that's what they say. You're not going to tell me that this neighbour, what's his name? Oh, Mr Hartley. Mr Hartley's going to get up in the middle of the night, break in here, all to mess about with a few flowers. I've lived long enough to believe people capable of anything. Confidential inquiry. It will be easier if I came inside. <laughs> what on earth should I be doing with a, a private detective? Oh, well, I'm not looking for clients. Bless my bottom. You're from that Alexander woman, aren't you? Oh, well, uh, in a way... Um... In a way? What do you mean, in a way? It's her, isn't it? Wretched woman! Well, I am going on there, but... Um... But absolutely nothing. I'm not concerned with the latest bee in her bonnet. Just inform her that I'm waiting for the west wind to blow. And when it does, I shall burn my leaves. Just tell her that, Mr. Private Detective. Good day. <laughs> Alexander mentioned sending a cable to somebody by that way, husband. Oh, no. Colonel's been dead for seven years. He died the week after they moved in here. No, uh, that would be the brilliant young man. What brilliant young man? Oh, whenever she mentions his name, it's always Mark Wooland, that brilliant young man. Monograph of the genus Grammatophora. 
phylum, phylum, by Mark Wood. What is it? An orchid. What else? Yeah, who's he? He's a horticulturalist. She met him in the hothouse at Kew, and she's never been the same since. He started her off. Well, perhaps I should have a word with him. You can't. He's in South America, looking for orchids. Huh. What else? All those flowers in there, did he have anything to do with them? Oh, yes, he'd everything to do with them. He does all his experiments in there. What experiments? Selective breeding, he calls it. Oh, something to do with genes. He'd have a fit if he knew about all this. Well, I must get tea. You make yourself comfortable. No, thank you. Oh, when's he due back? This coming Sunday, I think. For my dear Lydia, who has given me every help and encouragement in the elusive search. and shine. Was the night entirely without incident? Uh, yes. yes. Hmm. Milk? Sugar? 
Uh, yes, please, yes. Do we have a sweet tooth? Uh, yes, I'm afraid we do. Uh, two, please. I'm sorry. Help us up to toast. It's all for you. I'm Slimmy. It's not easy to stay awake in there. It's like, like a Turkish bath. Very stupefying. Oh. The orchids belong to a genera that originated in Borneo, so there's nothing to be done. A drop in the temperature and they'd all be dead. Yeah, I'm afraid I would be too. You see, my Spend brilliant young there. friend is making a breakthrough. An entirely new kind of orchid, absolutely unique. So nothing must happen to them until he gets back from Colombia on Sunday. It's a great responsibility. What do you mean you want me to spend two more nights in there? Well, of course. You must realize how important it is. Oh, God, Mrs. Alexander, nobody's going to interfere with your flowers. You're wasting your money and my time. I can't take the risk. You must understand the position. Well, I must have done some funny jobs in my time at wet nursing orchids. No, I'm, I'm afraid that's it. I've had enough. I will double your fee. You've just made me an offer I can't refuse. Thank you. been babysitting Mrs. Alexander's orchid. That's what I did. Very well, did she? Mm -hmm. I can't be bad. Get a good night's sleep. Oh, well, yeah, I did drop off once. I just thought you might be interested to know. It wasn't all in her imagination. We did have an intruder. Oh, not hardly. Couldn't be. No, no. Certainly wasn't him. Whoever it was saw me and took off like a young streaker. You get a good look at him? No, not a chance. It's thinnish, about six foot tall, darkish slacks, roll neck sweater, 
Didn't see his face. He was moving away from me all the time. Not a trouble to go to for an orchid. Silver. Silver? Yes. I told her if anyone was breaking in and that conservatory makes a good entry point, it was her silver they were after. She's quite a good collection. Early Georgian. Yeah, but I wish she'd told me. Ah, <laughs> oh, the calls we've had from her. Hartley's dog piddling on the lawn, peeping Tom's previous owners not leaving before she moved in the house with the Colonel. Well, they were turned over. Big job. Were they? I <laughs> got away with her about hundred thousand pounds worth. You advise her to keep her silver in a depository, Frank. Now that way she won't get disturbed nights. Two four double nine, Mark here. I'd like to see you, Mr. Marker. It's important. Uh, very important. Uh, there's a pub near you, the Crown. I'll see you in the lounge bar in five minutes. Uh, wait a minute. Now hold on. Do you mind with Sadan? No. Here, yeah, cheers. Your good health, Mr. Marker. And what do I call you? Oh, um, let's say Freddy. Just Freddy? Uh, for the moment. Uh, you're on a bit of a spot, aren't you, Freddy? What makes you think that? Intuition. Well, I'll admit I'm a little short on time. Well, in that case, don't waste any more of it. What's a proposition? A thousand pounds. I'm impressed. What were you doing last night in Mrs. Alexander's conservatory? That's what all this is about, isn't it? So this is where you've been hiding. Why didn't you pop your head round in the public, eh, Freddy? I think you've made a mistake. Mistake? Right. But it's not me who's making it, it's you. John's in the public, he's expecting you. I've got nothing to say to him. Oh, yes, yes, you have. Now, you can't afford a scene in here, Freddy, can you? Better come and have a word with John, eh?
coming. Oh, Kill. hello, it's you. Hmm? You're early, aren't you? Yeah, I wanted to check a couple of things in the conservatory. I thought it was Mrs. Alexander. She's away of forgetting her keys. Oh, she's out, is she? Yes, seeing her friend in Windlesham, playing gin rummy. Oh. What a pleasant surprise to see you. Oh, it's been a boring day. Is it? It's Frank, isn't it? Yeah, yes, sir. You don't mind if I... Could? No, not a bit. There must be a lot of excitement in your job. Ah, uh, pretty dull most of the time. You don't look married, Frank. Are you? No, no. I've been married twice. Both times, disaster. And I like men. I just can't live with them. Oh, well. Third time lucky, perhaps, eh? <laughs> I don't think so. I've just made a cup. Oh, thanks. Eileen? Eileen. Frank? <laughs> no, no, not exactly. It's uh, two sugars, isn't it? Uh, that's right, thanks. I was wondering about this conservatory. It's been added on, isn't it? Yes, I hope that's strong enough. Yes, yeah, so let me see. About five years ago, it was Mark Mullen's idea, I believe. Do you like custard creams? Yeah, yes, I do. Well, he certainly gets things done, doesn't he, our brilliant young man? Yes, though he's not all that young now. No India at all, Mr. Mark? No, no, not at all. Would you like a glass of port? Eh? Yes, I would. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, do... do sit down. That was the place we had in Uti. Uti command. It was lovely. And the air like wine. I thought India was hot. Hot and barren. Oh, in the plains, yes, but... Uti is a hill station. Huh. That's my bearer, Premjit. The best I ever had. We had six servants, you know. Oh, you must miss all that. Yes. But it's the social life I miss most. We had marvellous parties. Oh, it's a long time ago, I know. Another word. It's such a lonely business now, living. There was a certain fabric, a pattern to life. Colourful, too. We dressed for dinner. 
I don't suppose I've worn a dinner jacket more than half a dozen times in my whole life. Really? Uh, and even then it was hired. <laughs> uh, what do they say? What you never had, you never missed? It's something like that, yeah. I should have had children. Do you have children? No. Aren't you married? No, not married either. Well, wouldn't you like to have a family? To be quite honest, I've never given it much thought. Oh, well, for you, there's heaps of time. Yeah, I suppose so. Just look at me. This great place. Rattling about like a pea in a pod. <laughs> I'm stop wallowing in nostalgia. It's a sign of age. And if you don't mind, I think I shall retire. I hope you have a trouble-free night. Sleep well. Oh. Thank you. Help yourself to port. Thank you. doing stuff has recovered, but not that. I just wonder. Oh, what are you up to, Frank? Getting lucky, I hope. Uh, uh, wait a minute. 5,000 pounds reward for information leading to its recovery. I thought there might be something like that. Thank you. Just what I wanted to hear. Oh, listen, what's the name of that solicitor again? Um, 
King and Price. Uh, too soon. Hello, yes. I'd like to talk to, or well, make an appointment to see him. Um, it doesn't matter. I'll ring back. Oh, I hope you didn't do that on my account. Uh, especially if it was an important call. It'll keep. I'm sorry I left you so abruptly yesterday, but uh, I didn't have much choice. Yes, I got that impression. Did you have a word with your friend in the public? Yes, yes, I did. did do you, do you mind if I sit down? I hope so. You look a bit tired. Hmm? You're a uh, squeezy stomach. <laughs> How long did your friends in the pub give you to deliver? How much do you know, Mr. Marker? Forty-eight hours. That's exactly right. Aren't you afraid you were followed here? Oh, I can be elusive, you know. But don't worry, there's nobody out there. You can't be doing too well. This is one hell of a situation for an office. Oh, I like it. It's very convenient. And I like comfort. You must have been a bit short of that in Wormwood Scrubs. You've been checking up on me, haven't you, Mr. Marker? Well, it's my vocation, isn't it? Even if you're not getting paid. Oh, but I am. I'd be well paid. You're wasting your time here, Freddy. Sure. If I were you, I'd emigrate before the boys catch up with you again. Next time, it might not be so easy as just a queasy stomach. You didn't play it straight with your friends in the pub, did you? You can use a thousand pounds, Mr. Marker. I mean, that conservatory, when you got out and came down here and found they built a conservatory on the place, must have been very confusing for you. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about the time when you were employed as a glorified houseboy by the people who lived in the laurels before Mrs. Alexander. The time you tipped off your professional housebreaking friends about all the goodies inside the house. All those very portable objets d'art, as they say. Stuff valued at a hundred thousand quid. Well, give or take the odd thou, but what you didn't tell them about was the painting, wasn't it? The Peter de Hoop. Hmm? You put that on one side, didn't you? Little bow nurse buried in the garden to be dug up in the dark night. When all the fuss had died down. Pity they picked you up as an accomplice. You really had some rotten bad luck, Fred, haven't you? I wouldn't disagree with that assessment, Mr. Marker, but, uh... Uh, tell me, you, you haven't, uh... No, you haven't. I haven't what? Found it. Found what? The De Hoog. I'm not saying. Look, without my help... Your help? You made me laugh. No, you couldn't. Oh, yeah. I could. You had your hands on the treasure, Fred. Bad luck, mate. Muffed it. My turn now. Look, if you imagine Excuse that me. I'm... Two four double nine. Mark it here. You've got a visitor. I'd like to have a word. I think it's for you. Hello. John's getting worried, Freddy. The time you're wasting. The company you're keeping. course, occasionally have need of an inquiry agent, but at this moment... I'm not looking for work, Mr. King. It's a question of establishing my identity. Establishing your identity? Yes, that's right. I see. Well, uh, you've done that, Mr. Marker. So shall we move on? Uh, take a seat, would you? Thank you. 
Oh. Ah. Ah, yes. Yes. 1967. I remember it well. Everything was recovered but the painting. A good de hooch. A de hook, wasn't it? Hook? The same thing. G H C H, alternative spelling, that's all. Oh, I see what it is, alternative spelling. Yeah, that's right. Do you have some information for us then, Mr. Marker? About a year ago, a de hook, or de hooch, was auctioned at Sotheby's. Fetched £84,000. And that was an example considered inferior to a woman in the courtyard. That painting there that's still missing. Uh, yes. Uh, you don't mind a pipe, do you? No, not at all. Mr. Marker, is this uh, painting in your possession? No. No, it isn't. You have information that could lead to its recovery. The woman in the courtyard was insured for £50,000. Now, its present day value, even a conservative estimate, would be near uh, 80000 Wouldn't you say that was fair? Um, uh, yes, uh, very fair. Yes, so the reward, the £5,000, isn't really adequate. I mean, it's not even 10%, is it? Should be nearer eight thousand, wouldn't you agree, Mr. King? Uh, yes. But uh, you're not quite up to date with your information. Let me put your mind at rest, Mr. Marker. The insurance company involved increased the reward figure to ten thousand pounds some considerable time ago. Did they? Did they? Ten thousand pounds. Uh, the painting, Mr. Marker. You know of its actual location at this moment. Let's say I'm 95% certain. And uh, how long will it be before you can be 100% certain? Oh, today, Mr. King. Today. Today. There's that man again. There's some hanky-panky going on there. Cease that disgusting behavior. Hello. Good morning, Eileen. Lovely day. You're cheerful, aren't you? Yeah, it makes a change, doesn't it? What happened last night? Mrs. Alexander's got migraine again, and she's been infuriating. She won't say a thing. Nothing at all about last night? No. I went into the conservatory this morning and I found those paving stones dug up. Yeah, well, don't worry. All will be revealed, I hope. Do we have to have all this suspense? Yes, we do. It's the best part, isn't it? Anticipation. Mr. Mark is here, Mrs. Alexander. Yes, yes, show him in. Morning, Mrs. Alexander. Lovely day. Is it? Yes. Sun shining. Sorry about the migraine. Mm. Stupid of me to have one today, of all days. How did you get on with Mr. King? Oh, he made a great show of being unimpressed, but uh, I think I managed to raise a flicker of interest. Yes, but did he take my point about the reward? Oh, he did. Did he did. Mind you, it wasn't really necessary. Uh, how's that? Well, it seems the insurance company had already increased the reward offer some time ago. Beyond the 5,000? Oh, yes. Quite a bit beyond. How much? Double. 10,000 pounds? Yes, Mrs. Alexander. Satisfactory? Yes. One could make use of a sum like 10. Five 
Thank you, Mrs. Alexander. Dig it up now. When we first started growing orchids, we had to sterilize the soil. What with? Formaldehyde. Very strong. Very corrosive. Orchids. Bloody orchids. 